I like to carry this around with me because I always like to know where things are, well, where people live. And today, we have a story that comes from the opposite side of the world, a long ways from here. Did you know what I was going to ask, Lily? Yes. You want to come and show them where it is? Uh, yeah, because I haven't told you yet. Our story today comes from an island in Indonesia, and we're studying the Indonesia and the South Pacific in our Sabbath school lessons. And it is, the country I want to talk about today is this bright yellow half of an island, and it's called Papua. Now, mostly we know about the other half of the island, which is Papua New Guinea. And they're in two different countries, but they are very much alike. Now, there aren't any roads to speak of in Papua, just in the main cities. So it's really hard to get around there. And I want to talk to you about, now, if we don't have roads, I guess we could use boats on rivers, except sometimes there's waterfalls and you can't go any farther. So how would you get to a certain place in Papua if you don't have roads so you can't drive your car and you don't have boats to get to the tops of the mountains? How would you get there? Walking. Walking. You're right. And for many years, that's what people had to do to get from one village to another. And when our missionary pilots and missionaries needed to get there, they had to walk. And sometimes they had to walk for a week to get to a certain village they needed to speak in or they needed to bring help to it. And just imagine what would happen if somebody was sick or broke their leg. How would they get to a doctor? They probably couldn't make it to a doctor. Or if they did, somebody had to carry them for days after days. That doesn't sound like a good way to do things, is it? So God gave many missionaries something special to work with. It's called an airplane. How many of you have ever seen an airplane? I think you've all seen one. Have you ever ridden in one? No? Okay, well, your day's coming. I promise you sometime in your life you will. One night, a missionary pastor and his helper, Pastor Moses, and his helper Darius, went to bed in their own homes, and they each had a dream. When they talked to each other the next day, the pastor said, I had a dream last night that I need to go to a village far away, three days walk. And Darius said, I did too. What did your dream tell you? And the pastor said, I need to go there, and I need to take somebody, and we need to preach to those people. Well, Darius said, I had the same dream. Maybe I'm supposed to go with you, Darius said. And the two laid plans, and they planned to be gone for two weeks because they had to go to the village. And how many days away was it? Good math. Three days. And then they were going to preach there for a week. And then they had to walk back home. That doesn't sound like an easy trip, does it? I mean, it's great if you can get in your car and drive to a town and stay a week. But they didn't have a car, and they didn't have roads, and they didn't have airplanes. So they got their food ready, and they packed up their clothes, and they started marching off toward the village. They knew where it was, but they had not been there before. And when they got there, they went around the village and told everyone, please come, we're going to gather under the tree at the end of the village, and we're going to talk to you about God, and we're going to teach you what God wants you to do. Do you think the people would be excited? Yeah. I think so, because they don't get many visitors. And so they all gathered under this big tree at the edge of the village, and the pastor told them about Jesus and how much he loves them and how he wanted them to be his friends. Except something happened. You see, the morning they started the meetings, Pastor Moses got sick. Oh, he hurt all over. His head ached and his body ached, and he didn't have any energy, and he didn't want to eat. 
And Darius knew right away what was wrong with Pastor. He had a terrible disease called malaria. Have you ever heard of malaria? Some of you have. It's like having a really, really bad case of the flu that doesn't want to go away. It takes days and days to get over it. And the, the people in the village just looked at him and said, well, he has malaria. He's not going to be preaching. In fact, he's going to be dead in a day. So they really weren't planning on a meeting. And the meetings were at 5 o'clock in the evening, just before the sun goes down, because they don't have bright lights in their village. And you have to do things during daylight. And at 5 o'clock, Pastor Moses well, got up and sat up and looked around and realized, oh, my aches are gone. My fever's gone. I am hungry. So he hurried over to the water and he washed up and he combed his hair and he ate a little something and he went to the meeting. Oh, the people said, he didn't die. He's fine. Okay, we'll listen to him. And so they listened and they thought about what he said and they tucked it in their back, back of their brain and they all went home for the night. The next morning, when Pastor Moses woke up, oh man, oh, I hurt. I hurt all over. It's even worse than yesterday. And he didn't want to eat. And his fever kept going up and down. And his helper Darius kept giving him water because he needed to drink water. And at five o'clock, he woke up. Oh, I'm feeling better. I think I'll get up. And he ate a little bit, and he washed up, and he met everybody at the village tree that afternoon. Oh, he's still alive, they said. Guess he's, he's supposed to be here. I guess we ought to listen. And they listened. And the pastor told him how Jesus died for them, and how he loves them, and he wants them to be his children, his friends. And then he started telling them about safe things to eat and not safe things to eat, kind of a health talk. And he knew that most of the people in, in this whole island eat wild pigs. That's one of their favorite foods and also very easy to catch. And they thought, he wants us to give up our food? Ha, huh, that won't happen. Well, after the meeting that night, Pastor Moses went back to his bed, and he lay down, and the next morning he woke up. And what do you think happened? He was sick again. For five days in a row, Pastor Moses woke up and was terribly sick. High fever, didn't want to eat anything, didn't want to move. And he prayed. He could pray. We can all pray even when we're sick, right? Because God wants to be near us and wants to help us. And at 5 o'clock that afternoon, he got up, he washed up, and he went to have a, a message for the people. All these days, and the people said, I've never seen anyone have malaria like this. They wake up, and they get up, and they preach, and then they go back to bed, and they're sick. All five days of his sermons, that happened. And on the last day, the people were there. They wanted to know if the pastor was going to show up again. And he came, and he preached, and he invited anyone in the village to come and give their lives to Jesus, and he waited expectantly. Only nobody came. Nobody stood up and said, I want Jesus to be in my life. He was disappointed when he went back to his room that night and he prayed, Lord, why did we come if people won't accept our message? So the next day, Pastor Moses and his friend Darius walked three days back to their homes, wondering all the while, why did God do this? Well, things went back to normal in the village Everybody was back to their old plans, eating their old food, doing everything they did before. And on Saturday morning, they said, hey, have you seen Dolby? Dolby was their hunting dog. He was the best hunter in that whole village, and they needed him to go hunting. Where is Dolby? He's not here for breakfast. He's not here. He's lazy. Where is that dog? And they called and they called until someone finally said, I found him. He's under the tree where the preacher held his meetings, and he's not moving. 
And they went over and they found Doby and they offered him some food, but it was pork. You don't eat pork, do you? No. Well, apparently Doby wasn't eating any pork that day either. And he wasn't going hunting either. He stayed that whole day right there in that spot under the tree waiting for the pastor to preach a sermon. And he didn't move until the next morning. And the guys came and looked at that dog. They said, okay, it's Sunday now. You better come with us and go hunting. So he jumped up and he went hunting. But when he saw a pig, he didn't, he didn't chase after him. He wasn't going to catch that pig for anything. He wasn't eating pig anymore. And the guy looked and said, what is this? He won't go, he won't go out and, 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 and hunt on Saturday. And he won't eat pig any other day. This dog has become an Adventist. And the next week came around and they, he wouldn't go hunting on Saturday and he wouldn't hunt for pig anymore. And they said, you know what? If our dog is an Adventist, I think we need to be Adventist too. And so they quit eating pork. And many of them kept the Sabbath and they had a meeting every Saturday, but they had no preacher. They had no way to contact the preacher. He never knew that they wanted to become Adventists all these months after he had been there. Then one day, these people built, not one day, it took them many months, they built a, a, an airplane runway on the top of the mountain. They had to make sure it was very smooth and very wide for an airplane to land there. And when the Adventist pilot learned that there was a new village to visit, he got in his plane one day and he rode out there to visit the village. He saw you, sure enough, there's a runway. It's all freshly made. It's all nice and grassy. And he circled two times, which was always the way the pilot let the people know he was coming. And then he landed. All the people ran to the, air, the airport, the air, airstrip, and they were singing and dancing and joyful. And then one man stopped and he looked at the plane and he said, are you Seventh-day Adventist plane? And the pilot said, how did you know? He says, that sign on your plane with three funny angels, that's Adventist. Are you Adventist? And the pilot said, yes, I am. And I'm here to bring you some supplies. And I'm here to ask you if you know about Jesus. But apparently they knew about Jesus because they knew who an Adventist was. And they told them the story about how the pastor came and he preached and he was sick and then he was well and then he was sick and then he was well. And how they didn't even accept Jesus when he was there. It was their dog Dolby who had taught them the importance of following Jesus' rules. And it was Dolby who taught them how to eat. And you know, Pastor Pilate said, I'll call that pastor and I will tell him what's happened here after he left. And you know, as soon as the pastor came, he was able to baptize 21 people in that village, but almost 100 of them attend church every week under the tree where Dolby taught them the importance of keeping God's laws. So boys and girls, you're not a dog, but you can tell people about keeping God's laws just by obeying your mom and dad, your teachers, your pastors. Always remember that if animals can do it, we can do it too. And let's keep our light for Jesus burning by telling others about Jesus. Thank you, you may go back to your seats.